welcome back, welcome go players, to another episode of the Purify Podcast. Today is August 1st, 2021. I am your host, Luis Palacios, with my co-host, Chris. Hey, how you doing? How you doing? Dude, it's been over a week, all right? <laughs> How's it going? A hot minute. A hot minute? Uh... <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, how you been? I mean... We have been talking a couple of hours, a couple of days. Well, technically, we talk a couple of times, but we just haven't really talked about Pokemon we Go. We play a little bit Unite together, you know, a little some. Yeah. But yeah, we've been uh, taking a little break uh, from talking Pokemon Go news. Well, uh, but definitely excited to be back. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, I'm glad that I was able to get everything up and running for today. Uh, there has been a lot of changes right now in my life that uh, I needed a week off from thinking about the podcast or anything like that, so... Nothing, nothing like, too, nothing like bad or anything. It's more like I kind of now living by myself, and now I need to get like I need to get take care of myself and other things. So I had to like organize a lot of stuff. Like my entire room completely changed. I had to cha- switch over a lot of different things. So, uh, yeah. So yeah, that, that's basically what happened, and that's why I'm not I'm, I wasn't ready to podcast that last week. And definitely, we missed a lot of news for sure. Uh, but it's good that we're covering it now because at least we got a little bit more to talk about today for sure. Uh, aside from eh, a little bit of chaos in the community right now, for sure, uh, that we'll definitely be covering because it's important to any other listeners and, of course, uh, important to us as players, content creators, or anything else that, um, that you might see out there. But anyways, uh, we are here once again, and I'm sure you know. That we're here to talk about Pokemon Go news updates and ranting about the game because we love the game just as much as you do. Real quick, before I finish off this dialogue, let's remind everybody that we are part of the Professor Network. Check us out on professornetwork.com slash podcast. Wonderful people to work with every single time. All the time, they have wonderful things to say and every single time, that make me laugh anyway. So that's, 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 that's two good pointers on that, you know? <laughs> Alrighty. So, Chris, how about we recap two weeks' worth of shinies and hondos? Or maybe both? <laughs> uh, looks like I lost Chris already. Nah. This is what happens when you don't actually, you know, stream for a week or, you know, do podcasting for a week because I know that I lose my, um, my co-host on things like I, this. I didn't move. I didn't move <laughs> an inch. <laughs> Next thing I know, I'm disappearing on you. <laughs> It's like you're gone, brother. <laughs> oh man, dude, I I was legit looking up uh, my shinies and uh, all that jazz. That's so weird. Well, I'll definitely let you go first uh, because I am finishing up this Dialga right here. Uh, hopefully, okay. I can beat it, but yeah, it should be fine, I guess. Um, zero to fourteen, I think would be the way. Well, we, let's say um, we we are probably. We're technically two weeks worth of shinies and hondos after GoFest, so yes, we are basically basically there. If you have like two weeks worth. Yeah, that's weird. Um, eighteen. I don't know. It feels like it's showing older Pokemon. That's so strange. Mm. Yeah, um, something to say I that guess. Says. Something to say that yeah, says. I guess. Um, the like oldest Pokemon. I only got three shinies. I didn't get any hondos, but I did catch a ninety-eight. Um, uh, Beldum. Uh, so that was kind of exciting. Okay. I still don't have a Hundo, I don't think so. Mm. It was kind of exciting to catch. No Hundo Beldum. That's interesting. No sir. Um, I do. Yeah. I did get a shiny Mewtwo. Uh, from one of the raids. I don't really care too much about the normal one. Um, he's just trade bait, really, because I'm more for the Side Strike and Shadow Ball ones. Um, I also got another shiny uh, Voltorb. He's always a fun one to get. And okay. I got one shiny Dialga, oh. uh, which I'm definitely going to be mirror trading with Crambo because I would <laughs> very much like one for Go Battling. Oh, yeah, definitely. That, that's a good trade altogether. Um, while I go ahead and hopefully finish this Dialga, right? Because I'm like literally 20 seconds in and so like, it has like a quarter of a le- or like probably 5% left of health in there. That's some weird background on it, too. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the glitch whenever you re- re-enter the lobby with uh, some Pokemon or something. Uh, looks like we're gonna gotta be dead. We're gonna be... Ah, jeez. Ah, I'll probably get invited to it again, anyways. 
All right, so let me go ahead and go over my Hondos and Shinies. I definitely be doing a lot more raiding for Dialga uh, and a lot more uh, hunting this last few days for sure. When I have the time, of course, because I haven't really had the chance to really go out and play aside from probably one day in between the week or something. So, so let's see here. First and foremost, let's look at some Hondos. I have now four... Five new hundos since uh, GoFest. Two of them being Ammonite, one in the wild, one from a hatch on the 7k eggs. I did get a hundo Bastion, or well, a hundo uh, shield on. So that's pretty cool. Although it doesn't max out to, you know, 2500 or anything like that. Uh, I do have a hundo Anorats, another wild spawn, and a Purify Execute from a Shadow Quest. So that's pretty nice. So at least the Hondo categories is still going uh, pretty strong for me, so that's good to know. <laughs> and then for Shinies, oh lordy, let's see. Uh, since the Alga has come back, I have now nine Shiny Dialgas <laughs> that I've been doing. Holy. Well, like I said, I've been doing a lot of raids. I've been going to a global raid groups and everything just to try to see if I can get like a Hondo or something. I do have... Mm -hmm. Enough extra large candies to max out our level 50 Dialga. And one of the best shiny Dialgas is a 98, 15, 15, 14 shiny. Dude. <laughs> that is a nice one. I know, I know. I was happy about it. When I saw the CP, I was like, oh, so close to the Hondo. And I'm just like, so I know it's going to be a 98 and everything like that. But then, you know, the shiny came out. I'm like, ah. <laughs> And I was with my friends at the time, so yeah. Uh, I did have a traded one too, but uh, that was because I also had another shiny dialogue for that. Zero Chinese dialogues for paper cut? That's surprising. <laughs> I, also, I also did get a Bolter shiny. I think I got this from my Go Plus? Or was it? I think I just got it in between or something like that. And then this morning, for some reason, a Kabuto decided to spawn, and, you know, it can be shiny too, so I got a shiny Kabuto. So now I completed the family for Kabuto, so that's pretty nice. Well, they're boosted too, so that's even cooler. <laughs> uh, looks like I re invited to the raid. No, I need to get in there. Oh my god, I just got in. Clutch. Clutch and clutch in. Cool. Uh, but yeah, those are my holes for the Shinies and Hondos. Again, I've been doing Dialgas for days because one, I wanted the extra large candy and two, I actually wanted to, uh, I wanted to get the Hondo. I just, for some reason, I've done so many raids and I still haven't gotten the Hondo. I don't know what's going on. I got in quite I think it's hilarious uh, how many people have gotten the Shundo online too. Oh, I know. Like, it's insane how many people get it. I know. But when people post the Shundo, I'm like, give it to me. <laughs> <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, it, it's just been one of those, uh, re re like, extreme Pokemons to hunt for because Dialga is just such a powerful Pokemon in Ultra in Master League. Uh, you really do want a level 50 uh, best body to, to be able to get it. So I'm waiting for Dialga to leave completely before I'm able to actually, like, put real the extra large candies to it. Um, and then I'll be, you know, more than fine to go about powering up maybe the 98 or the other 98 that I already have, which is also a 15, 15, 14 that I had uh, from a trade, actually. So that's even cooler. The funny thing is, it was a trade, but it wasn't a lucky trade. It was just a regular number trade, and it still was a 98. So I was like, I'll take that. <laughs> oh, my God. Did Gunta? Yeah, Gunta already gifted us up. Thank you so much. Gunta. Gunta. <laughs> Thank you so much, Gunta. I do appreciate it. Uh, but, yeah, so... I've been going hard on it, and that's because the Ultra Unlock Part 1, since we knew it was going to happen, uh, Dialga being shiny and other things. So let's go ahead and recap the Ultra Unlock Part 1. But before we do that, since we really haven't talked about what the uh, Ultra Unlocks have been, let's actually talk about the news about the Ultra Unlock and see what exactly we are already on and expecting for the next Ultra Unlock for sure. So how about we talk about this, Chris? Let's talk o. Let's talk o. While we get destroyed by this Dialga. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, dude. I'm so glad that they're finally giving us shiny Dialga in Palkia. You think uh, this is something we've wanted for years and years oh, and years? Yeah. yeah, well, when was the last time the Dialga in Palkia came around? 
uh, aside from uh, like, it was Go Fest. Go Fest. I think it was Go Fest 2020, right? I believe so. Yeah. Um, at least, at least you know, not counting 2020 uh, or Go Fest 2021, um, because you know we we did see Dialga during the, yeah. the part two and everything. But I think it was all the way back there. I think so too, and that was because they gave it to us to raid during times that you know we were doing other things, which. At the time, not a lot of people were actually caring about it. I think Go Battle League we didn't go bad. Oh yeah, Go Battle League was out already. Master League was oh, a yeah. thing. Yeah. yeah. So people were, but again, it wasn't like prominent for extra large scale or anything. We didn't even have level fifty at the time. So not a lot of people were really caring about it, mostly because the Shenny wasn't released at the time. So we had a long nah, time since then. Okay. People wanted like a one and done. They're like, I'll raid it when the shiny comes out. Yeah. <laughs> well now it's out and everybody's raiding it like crazy. But you know. So, Ultra Unlock Part 1 and 2, they really teased us um, uh, this information early in, in this last week, actually. Real quick, shiny check? Nope. Nope. What about CP? Uh, not good. Not good either. Anyways, um, so to, for, to unlock the Ultra Unlock is basically to say that we did all the challenges uh, during GoFest, all 24 collector challenges. Uh, so we I did it. We got what we wanted. Now, part one, which started on July 23rd uh, at 10 a.m. local time, and it's ending actually on August 3rd, so two days from this podcast recording. Uh, that's when it will actually end at 8 p.m. local time. Uh, the bonuses for Ultra Unlock or the features happening We'll definitely have some Pokemons appearing in raids, some Pokemons appearing in the wild, and some Pokemons uh, doing in time research and eggs. So, one of the things that happens, of course, Dialga is back in star in five stars with the shiny availability, just like you all we already seen. We have mm -hmm. uh, Magneton, Aerodactyl, Porygon two, and Golurk appearing in three star raids. Nah, nothing really there that we want to raid unless you want extra large candies for Magneton, maybe. I feel like it's just people that um. Yeah, the Magnezone Extra Large and people that don't really catch too many Golits, maybe? I, I don't know. Like, I was happy about Golit uh, there, but I was just like, is it really worth it? I don't think so. <laughs> so <laughs> just a freebie. Yeah, so I and I hatch enough to, to be able to have a Golit myself, so. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, that's, that's the three star. Now, the one stars, that's where the juicy comes in. We have Unknown You, Kralino, Shieldon, Bronson, and Clink appearing in one star race. And if you're lucky, you might also encounter a shiny Unknown You. Well, sad to say that I have done quite a bit of them and I still don't have to have the shiny. So, what about you? <laughs> um, what about you? Haha. <laughs> um... <laughs> I got shinies unknowns the last time they were in raids, but I've only done maybe six or seven use max. Um, but yeah, no, no shinies yet. Yeah. I got like two ninety sixes though. I'm like, what the heck? Where's this? Where's this luck for Dialga, man? I know, right? I know, right? <laughs> but yeah, it, it shiny unknown are super rare shiny, uh, mostly because it is a uh, letter of the unknown family. Uh, there only appears shiny during the time of some uh, on of event or something. So things like that it is. Now the fallen Pokemon will also be appearing in the wild. Now that we talk about the raids, we have Voltor, Porygon, Obnite, Kabuto, Voltor, Kratos, Shieldon, and more. And if you're lucky, you might encounter a shiny Kratos and a shiny Shieldon. Two brand new what? shinies, beautiful shinies too. I love the Kratos shiny. I was going to say, one of them is definitely better than the other one. Yeah. I've seen probably double the amount of people that got uh, Kranidos get shield on. I know. It's um, like, I like feel... so many people have gotten shield on. Now, let's just say they have been appearing in the wild quite a bit of them, but it, it mm -hmm. doesn't feel like the shinies rates have been like super raised for them. So we don't not seen a lot of shinies for both shield on or Kranidos at that point. Yeah, yeah, I haven't seen like a crazy amount of people get them. Uh, it would have been nice to see them be like super, super boosted. But at the same time, it is really cool seeing a multitude of them because I don't feel like the spawn rates would have been as high for them if uh, they raised the shiny odds more. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it, it has been nice to be able to at least catch a lot of them. 
And at the same time, you know, being able to cast both uh, Shield on and Kratos for Candy, uh, probably get a good one for PvP or anything like that. And Kratos being mm -hmm. one of the best, one of the best, uh, one of the best or the best rock attack attackers in both raids or uh, Tingle Rockets or anything like that. Because, I mean, he just does a lot of damage, like a lot of damage. Yeah, he's very underrated, I feel like, uh, from a lot of people. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So I've been doing quite of them, plus you know a lot of the quests and all that. So unfortunately, has not I have not been blessed by a shiny just yet. So uh, I just wish. Anyways, uh, we also have Pokemon hatching from seven K eggs, and those are of course uh, our event ones: Obnanite, Kabuto, Aerodactyl, uh, Liliet, Enerot, Cranidos, and Shieldon. So, leave to say the seven K pool at least has a little bit of diversity and more so a good a chance to hatch a lot of those eggs because each one of them uh, is uh, in the same pool of numbers. So you don't actually have to worry if you don't hatch too many of them or something like that. I've been hatching at at Actos from the seven K eggs. How about you, Chris? I do not hatch seven K eggs. <laughs> oh lord! <laughs> I'll uh, be honest. Um, I'm probably gonna be waiting. In all honesty until like munchlax is shiny and eggs before i start hatching again yeah yeah definitely definitely uh but that's because uh i kind of I, I wanted to maximize all my chances to get shiny kratos or shield on so i've been uh, mm -hmm. i've been doing a lot of the 7k eggs uh pool and all that so not a bad thing to say so yeah that's that and then of course we have time research uh to earn event pokemons and all that so uh, yeah, so we do. Uh, we finished the time research already. If not, we would have shown you guys by now. But that's pretty much all about catching, and you get chances on both Shield on and Krynos and Porygon and all those things. So it is to say the least. Uh, Mister Mister Salvin, I'm actually getting invited to raids. Unfortunately, I'm not in raids myself, so I can't really uh, invite anybody there. I do apologize for that. Uh, but yeah, and then. Let's talk about Ultra Unlock Part 2. Space, 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 space. The final frontier. <laughs> <laughs> You'd really have to make that joke. <laughs> Maybe. All right, all right. Uh, so Part 2 of the Ultra Unlock will start on Friday, August 6th. So we do have a little bit of time since the ending of Ult uh, Part 1. Uh, from August 6th at 10 a.m. to Tuesday, August 17th at 8 p.m. local time. The following features, of course, include... Uh, the following Pokemon will appear in raids from those specific times. Wait. August 6th to Friday, August 20th. Oh. Oh. Wait, what? Oh. A couple of days later after for the raids? That's interesting. Uh, I'll take it. Yeah, definitely. So, Palkia will be appearing in Faisa Race. And, of course, if you're lucky, you might encounter a shiny Palkia. Yay! Another shiny that we knew was going to happen eventually. <laughs> More Shandos. Yay! Yeah, I know, right? Like, one and done Shando. Okay, I'm good. <laughs> uh, but, yeah. So, shiny Palkia, just like... I mean, they couldn't just release shiny Dialga and be like, you know, we're going to get shiny uh, Palkia, too. So, that's pretty good to know. Uh, then we have, of course, uh, Alakazam, uh, Kangaskhan, and Heracross will be in three-star raids. And if you're lucky, you might find a shiny Kangaskhan or shiny Heracross. Dude, we want it. We want it bad. Yeah. Yeah, we're finally, finally getting shiny Heracross, dude. I've been waiting so long for this moment. <laughs> dude, it spawns so much here in Florida. Um, at least in the area we're in. So, we're definitely looking forward to this. We're going to be seeing a shiny hair cross like once a week, basically. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be like, it's what I think. It's what I think. Definitely, definitely. Uh, it, it, I mean, Heracross is a bug type. It's basically all bug types here anyway. So, we, we basically see Heracross all the time. Now, I'm definitely going to go hard for this one because Heracross shiny is just a beautiful pur pinkish purple shiny, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, not bad to say Plus, the least. I'm sorry? Plus, it's got that male and female variant. So, you got even more uh, reason to hunt both of them. And plus, it has a Mega! So, now... Mega yes! <laughs> oh, my God. So, so many things are happening during that time that is crazy. I mean... Unfortunately, Shiny or uh, um, uh, Mega Heracross or Mega Kangaskhan has not been announced for any of these events. So, unfortunately, we will not be getting those. But you can prepare for these kind of things. 
here's how it's going to work, or at least what it's telling us that's going to happen. He uh, Kangaskhan and Heracross are both regional Pokemons, and because of the distortion of space, uh, this is what's happening in the world. Uh, what If you uh, are in a place where it Heracross spawns, of course, the Shiny will be available in the wild, but if it doesn't spawn in your area, it will appear in three-star raids. So people actually have to raid Heracross for, uh, to get it uh, if they want Shiny ones. Mm -hmm. Which kind of sucks for a lot of people, but at the same time, it's kind of helpful for you know people in completionists. The same way it goes with Kangaskhan. Kangaskhan only appears uh, in certain parts of the world, and we don't get it ourselves, so we kind of have to rate it if we want the shiny. Of course, shiny uh, Kangaskhan has been available for a while already. Uh, this is just another chance of getting it um, from a part of the event, basically. You know. Mm -hmm. So yeah, be happy, be sad, or just you know, love the game if you can. <laughs> uh, then we have uh, one star race. We have unknown you again with C and E C shellos. Elgium and Esper will be appearing in one star race, and if you are lucky, you might find a shiny unknown you, which is basically the same thing. So that means that we actually have a little bit more time to hunt for that shiny. I like blue. Blue I like shallows. It. Blue shallows. It. Yeah, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, the following Pokemon will appear in the raids more frequently in, or I'm sorry, in the wild. I'm going crazy already. Uh, Clefairy, <laughs> Muna, Red Strip, and Blue Strip, uh, Basculin, Elgium, Heatmore, Durant, and more. So a lot of the uh, regionals that usually switch over are actually part of this. So that's pretty nice. I do wish that the, sh I think the shells are also going to be part of this anyway. So. Yeah, there we go. That's cool. That's interesting. cool. Interesting. 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 We also have uh, a complete time uh, research that we have to encounter during the times of August 6th and August 17th. And of course, there will be field research available on Pokestops throughout the event. So that's pretty cool to know. Pretty good to see. Uh, basically, just part two of this is more shinies, more uh, legendaries, shinies, and all that. So that's pretty cool. We're excited. We really are excited about these kind of things. And then, real quick, shiny check once again in part 3, 2, 1. Let's do this. Hey, shiny Dialga in screen for everybody Ooh. to see. That's like my 10th one anyways. <laughs> if it was Shando, I would have been more happy, but you know what I meant. <laughs> that lucky trade, though. That lucky trade. I, do, I am sucking up on lucky trade uh, Dialgas, and I know people will want this for sure. So, my lucky friends, come to me. <laughs> Uh, not a bad thing to see. I am trying to, like I said, I'm trying to get the Hondo, so hopefully I'll get the Hondo if I can, so. That being said, we also have question mark of our Ultra Lock Part 3, because there's literally nothing that we know about Part 3 about this. <laughs> you know, at first, we said uh, Arceus, mm -hmm. you know, but... I'm almost thinking it is possible for Hoopa, honestly, now. But it's kind of 50-50 for both of them for me now. Mm -hmm. Well, just to let you guys know, part three of the Ultra Unlock will happen from August 20th to August 31st. So until the end of the month when this happens entirely. So again, we don't have any information. I don't know. Maybe some, it says right here, will this number of events continue to happen? You know... Maybe we'll have a mix of both part one and part two with whatever else is going to happen. We shall see. Definitely going to have more information probably closer to the date of the event. We have around 20 days before that, or 19 days before that happens. So we'll definitely have it before on one of our uh, following podcast episodes for sure. Mm -hmm. So those are, of course, uh, the Ultra Unlock. Um, now let's really recap the first Ultra Unlock part one. Uh, what do you think so far? Like, is it good? Is it bad? What are your thoughts so far? Uh, I think it was everything it needed to be. Um, I guess the only thing I would say is, uh, it'd be kind of cool if we had the same spawn rates, but we had, uh, higher shiny chances, you know? Right. Um, don't get me wrong. The Pokemon are awesome spawning right now. You know, Beldum, uh, the fossil Pokemon Porygon. Just a bunch of fun Pokemon you don't really see. Oh, yeah. Um, I don't know. It, it just feels like um, 
it might just be because I didn't grind too hard, but I do wish there was something that had like a higher shiny chance spawning, you know, like Aerodactyl in the wild war or something. I don't think I saw one Aerodactyl in the wild. Yeah, Aerodactyl isn't really something that sp is spawning in the wild. It's mostly through the uh, eggs and raids. So, because yeah. I've been getting quite a bit of Aerodactyls from the eggs anyway, so hasn't been too bad yeah. in that regard. At least because I'm grinding that hard, you know, so hasn't mm -hmm. been too bad. So what do you rate the event, at least uh, part one? Um, At least an 8 out of 10. Okay. 8 out of 10 is not bad either. I'm going to say the same. I'm going to go with the same and 8 out of 10 just because it, everything so far has been great. The available shinies are great. The new shinies are great. The Alga being shiny is great. Uh, and of course, you know, it's just a diverse area of spawns all around. Plus, a lot of the fossils that we haven't seen. You Actually, if you believe it, I don't have shiny Enerot, Liliets. And yeah, that's about it. Those are the other two shinies that I don't have, aside from Cardios and Shieldon. So four shinies I still don't have, and I haven't even found one yet. And I'm only like a day and a half left of this event. Mm -hmm. So it is what it is when it comes down to it. But if I can get any of those shinies that I'm missing, that'd be good. That'd be cool. And that's why I really do rate it that way. And it's not, and it doesn't have like super big bonuses anyway. So it's not like triple X per cash experience or anything like that. So it's not actually like over the top kind of event. If it had like immensely amazing bonuses, I'd be all over a nine or a 10 at this point, but you know. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's basically all the information about the ultra unlock. Before we move on to part the second part of our news section here, Chris, Let's go into the third part of the section, because if not, we're actually going to skip over... Uh, we're definitely going to be skip over <laughs> this news again, definitely. Uh, one of the, one of the uh, news have been announced before the actual August dump of news, but we're going to talk about the dump of news just because we are technically... Um, the other news is basically in part of that. Anyways, we'll talk about it in between there. Okay. Everything. okay? So, coming in August, which is actually today, anyways... Uh, the Ultra Unlock and more. The dump of news of everything that's going to happen in the month of August is here, just like we always predict. It happens like usually a week before, um, technically before anything else happens, so or before the month, uh, mm -hmm. month starts. But what is going to be our breakthrough research box this time, Chris? Oh boy. From Sunday, August 1st at 1 p.m. to Wednesday, September 1st at 1 p.m. PDT you'll encounter Chimeco in Research Breakthrough Encounters. Chimeco. And if you guys remember, the shiny should be out right now. So you can get a shiny one. It's too bad you can't get Chinling shiny yet, but one day. You know what's funny? I hash a lot of Chinlings during Golfist. I'm thinking that it's going to be a shiny or not, but I guess there wasn't. There hasn't been yeah. any reports on it. Yeah, not yet. Just like Munchlax. That's true. Sadly. That's true. Uh, but Double yeah, XP too for uh, research and breakthroughs. I wish it was double Stardust. At oh. least, uh, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, catching... you don't get double Stardust for that catch of it. Yeah, catching Chimeco is like kind of like Insane. double Stardust anyway, so it's not too bad. That's true. <laughs> uh, but yes, Chimeco being um. But part of Research Breakthrough, now that we have the Shiny release since GoFest, you can get a uh, Shiny available. So if you didn't get it, you still have a couple of chances of getting it through the Breakthrough box. Uh, then there's also the One uh, one Pokecoin bundles. They are back on the month of August. Uh, the one-time purchase bundle containing a remote pass and other items will be available in the shop. Now, this is to say they're flipping the script on the Research Breakthrough box because before you will have to actually do the box and get your, uh, remote, your free remote pass uh, every seven days. But now they're just giving it for free for one Pokecoin. So I don't understand their logic when it comes to switching this up again to the box. Do you have any thoughts on that, Chris? I, I'm feeling bad for all the uh, perfectionists or the people with OCD that... <laughs> have to deal with their pokey coins going down one point. Oh, yeah. yeah. But uh, <laughs> that that's the main thing I'm thinking of. Um, I don't know, because I've heard people say that they've messaged Niantic and been like, oh, I can't afford to buy the one pokey coin. I don't have money and I can't go to a gym or something. And they credit a coin to their uh, account. Um, and that they're not obviously they're not gonna do that for players with like a thousand pokey coins. They're not gonna be like, oh well, let me just give you an extra coin. 
But if you have zero Pokecoins, sometimes they do that for players. But it's so strange to me that they're not able to set it up uh, to be free. Like, no coins. Well, te um, technically... Like, I, I still don't know why they do that. In the research breakthrough, it was free because all you had to do was do a research and they get to the research breakthrough. It was a seven-day streak kind of thing, which wasn't yeah. too bad in that regard. But I don't understand. I do I, like that you get to choose when it is with the one coin too, though. That's true. That's true. So eh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, it is a welcoming because now it opens up more to the casual player uh, instead of like, you know having to wait if you skip a day you have to wait an extra day to get your box and all that throughout the month and all that so it's not too bad in that regard but that means that you have to poke pokemons in gyms if you want to get the coin <laughs> <laughs> all right so yeah that's that then we have the following featured pokemons in raids uh we already know about dialga and Pakia, yeah? so that's pretty good those are the dates that we already mentioned before and both of them are shiny uh there is more Updates to come for the Pokemon that will be available after August 20th. So, again, they're still keeping it a mystery. Even throughout Stay tuned. This. Stay tuned for more. We do have the next Mega Evolved Pokemon appearing in Raids. We already have Mega Charizard X appearing in Mega Race until Friday, August 6th. Mega Ampharos will join us on August 6th until August 20th. Beedrill will be in Mega Race from August 20th to August 26th. And Mega Pidgeot will be in race from Thursday, August 26th to Wednesday, September 1st. Is there anything in there that says that we can probably guess what Pokemon uh, Pokemon could be in the 5-star race from the Megas? Because Beedrill is going to be in, in, in raids once the new uh, legendary Pokemon comes in. So anything weak to... Ugg? Bug types? The Hoopa? Well, Psychic, yeah, that makes more sense. I I'm just l leaning more towards Hoopa just because of how much uh, story they dropped for him and stuff during Pokemon Go Fest. It could just be a fun little thing, but they never had a story like that when they did all the legendary stuff before. So it's a little bit surprising to me. Um, don't get me wrong. I'd love for it to be Arcus. Yeah, um, yeah that's for sure. I don't know. Well, they're not going to definitely say, you know, here is Giratina, both Alter and uh, and the other form. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm not doing this. <laughs> so much suspense for nothing at the end of the day. Just like the egg in Chicago. <laughs> Anyways. Timers on timers on timers. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. Uh, so, yeah, that was the Pokemon in Mega Raids. Um... Then we have the, of course, the raid hours announcements. Uh, there's going to be four raid hours. Uh, one of them we already, uh, one of them was from Dialga last week. Uh, but then on August 4th, we have Dialga again. August 11th <clears throat> and August 6th, 18th, <coughs> we'll have Pokia. Yeah? Ah, my throat. And then Wednesday, we'll have the mystery legendary Pokemon in that regard. <coughs> Chris, go ahead and talk about the, the spotlight hours for week. All right. All right, all right. Okay, Tuesday, August 3rd. Magnemite will be in the spotlight, and you'll earn twice the Stardust for catching Pokemon. Amazing. Love it. Uh, Tuesday, August 10th. East Sea Shellos will be in the spotlight. You'll earn twice the XP for catching Pokemon. Tuesday, August 11th. West Sea Shellos will be in the spotlight, and you'll earn twice the candy for catching Pokemon. Another fun one. Uh, Tuesday, August 24th. A certain Pokemon will be in the spotlight, and you'll earn twice the candy for transferring Pokemon. Tuesday, August 31st, a certain Pokemon will be in the spotlight, and you'll earn twice the XP for evolving Pokemon. You may be wondering, why'd he say a certain Pokemon? That's legit what they wrote. They're not telling us, so right. it's got to be something pretty <clears throat> crazy. Um, Probably something, I'm hoping, regional, Uh, but we we don't know. Well, <clears throat> when it comes to this kind of thing, when it comes to this, uh, certain Pokemon for two spotlight hours, one of them is for the candy transfer. The other one is for uh, experience in evolving Pokemon, which the bonuses doesn't really matter as much when it comes down to that. No. 
But the more they, they like hint at this thing, the more I feel like it's going to be a Pokemon that we need more candy of or more stuff for it, you know? So the only one in top of my head that I can think of, and this is something that could, you know, skew over the whole conversation of Ho Hoopa or any of the other Pokemons out there. It could be uh, uh, Saigar. Now, Saigar is a legendary Pokemon from Gen 6. Um, we already seen, of course, Cernias and uh, Javelto. Saigar has multiple forms. And for the multiple forms, we need a lot of the uh, little Saigars to appear to be able to get, technically. So more candy for it, technically. If they want to go that route. But if they do what I think they want to do, and this is just a complete guess, a complete, like, off the nuts, you know, like, Team Four hat kind of thing. The, uh, Saigar could be in race to earn the candy, <clears throat> but then you need to catch little Saigar to be able to, uh, you know, evolve it into his final form. And that's why two spotlight hours is necessary for us to be able to investigate and catch as many Saigar um, uh, energy or Saigar um, mini Saigars to be able to, to get to this kind of thing, you know? It's just a guess. Be interesting. But again, they're giving it. They they're not telling us what the spotlight hour is for the last two spot hours of the month. So we're kind. I'm kind of like speculating a little bit there when it comes down to it. But it's still, it's just like could be fun. Could be interesting. In the end of the day, I think it's a fun theory. Yeah, I mean, I could be completely wrong, and it's just gonna be more Pikachu's we had. But you know, imagine. <laughs> Uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. So, uh, I think next we got to start talking about this type of news. What is our community day Pokemon for August, Chris? Well, um, it's kind of funny because it is something we've already had a community day for. It is the evolution Pokemon, Eevee. If you have not heard about it, you live under a rock. But, <laughs> but uh... Eevee's going to be the calm day. Something fun, though. We did not have Sylveon during the last time Eevee was in the spotlight. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to have Eevee calm day uh, this time, I feel like. Um, something else that's interesting is when you evolve Eevee into any of its evolutions, the Pokemon will know a special attack. And each one gets a unique special attack, which is pretty crazy, honestly. Um, <laughs> we're even seeing... Uh, Vapor we're seeing Vaporeon with Scald, Jolteon with Zap Cannon, what the heck, Flareon with Superpower, Espeon with Shadow Ball, Umbreon with Psychic, that one's the one I'm most excited for, Sylveon with Bullet Seed, Glaceon with Water Pulse, and then Sylveon with Psy Shock. And then uh, Eevee that are caught or hatched during this time will know Last Resort. I do wish a lot of them new last resort instead hmm. it was a much better move in a lot of cases i know a lot of people say that uh but it's gonna be really fun to see the different move set changes to all these pokemon yeah though definitely something that um it's technically needed for a lot of the evolutions anyways because <laughs> i mean yeah last resort is actually good because it's a generalist type of move it doesn't do a super effective damage to anything, but at least, you know, uh, that's a good damage if you actually can pull it off. A lot of the moves here for uh, most of the EV evolutions, uh, they don't really do it that good. Mostly because a lot of them are either uh, too hard to get to or too easy to not use. <clears throat> There's only a few notable ones like Sylveon, Umbreon, uh, probably <coughs> Flareon and Lithion have... Uh, a good chance when it comes to those kind of things, but still not something that is going to overpower the abilities of those Pokemon uh, to rate heights for, you know, Go Battle League or any of the other um, aspects of the games. Uh, no, I think uh, Leafeon is probably the most likely to do a good climb, uh, just because uh, I don't believe it got Bullet Seed <clears throat> before, <laughs> obviously. Um, oh, yeah. So it's bullet seed uh, leaf blade it's it's going to be almost as good as when the people were abusing uh the mel metal glitch a while ago in ultra league i feel like it's going to be pretty much as good as back then yeah definitely so uh there's a lot of different talks when it comes to those kind of things but if you go to pp poke shout out to them they will definitely be able to um 
know exactly how this moves will affect the meta because most of the most of the moves has already been in the game and mm-hmm. knew the power of it technically so that's not bad to say the least that again only a few of them will really benefit in that regard uh those you had a very good question you said do you have to walk your uh to walk 10 to get umber and espion yes so we do recommend if you do want to get an umber and espion for uh, to for to use in this this moves you do have to walk the ten kilometers for each EV and it has to be your body before you evolve it. So do remember that you have to do that. Now this is the interesting part because now it says here evolving EV into Sylveon will require only seven hearts instead of the usual seventy, which is good because that means that you can get a lot of Sylveon system around instead of um, the usual in regard. So my plan for this, if you do want to go and end with a plan for this. <clears throat> is to go ahead and do Umbrian and Sylveon, at least have two EVs ready to go for, for those evolutions, and then have an EV ready to go, or an EV technically uh, in your inventory when you're doing Community Day, both days, because you do have both uh, August 13th and August 16th to do this. Um, I'm sorry, uh, August uh, 13th and August 14th to do this technically. Uh, Mm -hmm. so, um, just make sure you can walk it, you can feed it. Basically, if you even, even a puffin, you'll be there to, to evolve the Eevee into Sylveon anyway. So that's the, at least the plan that I think this should be the best to follow on that. Yeah. Uh, if you want to, too, you can walk the Eevee 10 kilometers. Uh, make sure you walk it either five kilometers at a time or all 10 all at once. I would just walk at the 10 all at once uh, to be safe. Yeah. And then you can switch your buddy after that and then switch it back to that during the calm day at any time. Yeah. Uh, that way you don't have to stress out about evolving it during the calm day. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's at least the plan for it when it comes to the evolutions. A lot of them are going to be just trial and error, at least the first three, but most of them can be mm-hmm. a new player between those. Uh, Lithium and Glacian, you know, having the lures is enough. And <clears throat> the only other three are basically just harder to get in that regard just because you need to know how you can evolve them in, in, in that sense. <clears throat> Anyways. My face when I have to make room for all the evolutions because I don't know if their special moves are going to be really buffed in the future. Especially Scald. There's a lot of speculation on if Scald is going to get a move change. Just like a lot of people say, every move is just one update away for being good. Yes, sir. <clears throat> so, yeah. So, keep an eye on what Pokemon to you. Just have at least one of each, just in case, and then everything else will be fine. <clears throat> Thank you, Daniel Plays, for following. I appreciate the follow. Uh, we're talking about Pokemon Go once again. Then we have a uh, special time research available that rewards both a modular and a glacier lore. So at least you have one of those to be able to evolve the Umbreon and Le- I'm sorry. Lithium and Glacier. <clears throat> now I'm getting tired. <clears throat> Anyways. <laughs> Uh, there will be a one-time special t- uh, purchase box available for 1,280 Pokecoins featuring 50 Ultra Balls, 5 Incest, uh, Elite Fast DM, and Elite Charge DM. So not bad to say the least. Right, Chris? It wasn't bad. Uh, I mean, it wasn't too good, sorry, until I heard the Elite TMs. I'll be honest. <laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Uh, and then we have, during the hours of Community Day, which are only through Saturday... Uh, August 14th and Sunday, August 15th from 11 to 5 p.m. So I don't remember, during those hours. It will appear more frequently in the wild. If, you, uh, if you're lucky, of course, you might encounter a shiny one. <clears throat> a snapshot throughout the day for a surprise. That $1 <clears throat> special research EV community day special story called What You Choose to Be. Uh, and then X will require one quarter of their usual hash distance. And, so we'll, and this is and lower modules will last for three hours each. So let's hope that we can enjoy Eevee. Are you excited about this one? Uh yeah. I I always am a fan of shiny Eevee. Uh, I mean, you get to basically choose uh, about half, more than half of the Eevees, and then the last ones are kind of a roulette, which is kind of scary. <laughs> I would say. Uh, so you know. If you have a really good uh, PvP rank one and you want it to be a Flareon or a Vaporeon, 
you're gonna be getting three of the same one in a row probably but we'll see um i'm definitely hopeful and right now i'm thinking uh what if for the uh one dollar they give us one of each evolution that would could be um, cool but you never know uh but i may actually buy it if that's the case yeah no definitely I mean, they do they do a, a lot of these things to make sure that we can at least catch one of each. So it's not too bad. Yeah. Uh, do note that, of course, um, EB already have a previous uh, Community Day move. So unfortunately, you will not be getting this move if you evolve your EB during the calm days. So you will have to use an at least charge DM if you do want to know last resource of any of the EB evolutions. I need yoga. <clears throat> hey, nice. You got another one? Only my second. <laughs> Only your second. I got ten. Anyways. <laughs> I'll take it. Cool. All right. So we both have Shinies on screen uh, on stream on the stream today. So that's pretty good. Uh, so hopefully you're excited. If not, I know it's Eevee. I know it's that. So <clears throat> we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes, really. <clears throat> then let's go ahead and talk about the controversy that's happening today because everybody is just being, uh, they're being themselves when it comes to the Pokemon Go community because this is just another outrage once again. So here when we go. When people get the chance to cry, they cry. Yeah. So as you guys know, today, at least in uh, Australia, I'm sorry, New Zealand and uh, the United States, the bonuses, special bonuses has been changed once again. <clears throat> Um, this is what's having the community as a whole an, an outrage, saying that this is the worst decision that Niantic could have made in the long term. Uh, as you guys know, we did mention earlier in podcasts that uh, what are real thoughts about this <clears throat> is happening, especially, and the most bigger one, is the distance on Pokestops or being able to reach a Pokestop in gym. Unfortunately, uh, they did not revert back their uh, their news when it comes down to it. So that actually has been taken away. The range has been reduced from double to normal time this time around. And now the community is livid once again. <clears throat> um, really, I don't even know how to really start this conversation with everybody out here. but um, I got a starter. All right, go ahead. We we talked about it as soon as they made the COVID changes. We talked about it when they brought up the idea of ending the COVID uh, bonuses. When they made the COVID bonuses, they were applauded because they were one of the only companies that made a step in the right direction by, uh, you know, uh, giving you a chance to play during a time when everyone was very uncertain about what was happening, okay. uh, when people, you know, needed to be a little bit on the safer side. And now that they're trying to uh, change it back, and yes, there is still things going on in the world, but if they think that it is time for them to be loosening the rope that they have, in, in, in a way... Um, everyone's getting all stressed out acting like it wasn't ever going to go back. If they give you something extra, you can't cry when they take it away. I'm sorry. You know, it's very nice to have it, but the people that are crying about it are people that have uh, gotten an excess of things from it. Not the people that needed it from what I've seen, uh, but the people that have gotten more than what was uh, promised by Niantic, in my opinion. So it's very strange to me. <clears throat> yes. Um, I would say that basically, you know, a lot of people are just being crybabies about this. The bonus the bonus for the double distance on stops and jibs was a godsend for a lot of people. Especially, you know, disabled people and things like that because they weren't able to reach the normal Pokestop that is in their community or something similar. Um, when it comes down to that... <clears throat> I have three perspectives to really talk about it when it comes down to this take. First and foremost is the hardcore player, the casual player, or the disabled player. Now, <clears throat> the hardcore player will play no matter what. It doesn't matter where they are, what they're doing, or how they're doing it. <clears throat> they will go and grind the game, you know, 
nothing to say about it. Let me keep a sip of water real quick. I think they're also <clears throat> uh, some of the smartest players too, because they're they'll look at what's the easiest and fastest way to do things. I'll do it that way to grind as much as I can. Definitely. So it doesn't matter what they do, they still go out and play and grind because that's how things are. Uh, the casual player, it may, they may affect them a little bit more because now, because uh, when they the pandemic started, they knew they can play a little bit more uh, without having to go out too much or things like that, open the game whenever they can, and just basically, you know, enjoy the game with a added bonus when it comes down to it. So it wasn't too bad in, in that regard. And then, of course, there is the uh, disabled or uh, can't really walk or it's dangerous to go out for them kind of thing type of player, which this is basically what a lot of people are, are focusing about is saying that this benefit them the most when it comes down to it. And it's not that it wasn't bad for everybody else either, or it was, it was good for everybody. Literally, it was good for the entire community in that regard. But it doesn't... <sighs> It doesn't feel like it's helping them, you know, just because they're in that situation themselves. And I do want to say that, you know, this game is a go out and type of kind of play. It's just that it's not the best time to do it, if you know what I mean. Uh, the way that they were, the way they have portrayed this change without really acknowledging the community, it's what's feeling the the heartburn on what's going on entirely. Niantic hasn't really acknowledged uh, the player base um, on what's going on, on what they're doing about this kind of changes. Why are they doing this when they're not supposed to <clears throat> do the unprecedented times and all that? So things like that, uh, it kind of irks me because that's what they're focusing more uh, aside from trying to go out and try to enjoy the game that like it's meant to be enjoyed. And we all have, a lot of us, actually, most of the community have played this game since day one. So we know that this was just a bonus at the time, an unprecedented time during the world pandemic. It's time to do a little bit of a change, guys. Well, we can't be this selfish when it comes to this kind of thing. I just, every time I opened Twitter today, it was more like, I'm not going to play the game anymore. I'm going to play less. I'm going to boycott the game. I'm going to do this because they're not listening to us and things like that. I just I just don't understand why we can't try to at least go back. Now, if it's something that is affecting the world more than it should, then yes, Niantic should be reverting this something, this information back to the bonuses because it's not helping anybody uh, and it's actually putting them in danger in this kind of regard. But I don't feel like that's the case. I feel like Niantic is just trying to take the initiative when it comes to trying to go back to a more stable outside play for everybody. So, And, you know, it's not like they took away everything, too. Right. They're making, you know, steps is what I feel like. Yeah, definitely, definitely. If not, they would have just revert everything back and we wouldn't have remote raids, we wouldn't have... Um, GBL walking requirements back and all that, so it's it's kind of like they have listened to us when it comes down to it, uh, but it's just the way that they're portraying it and the way that they're not l telling us what they're thinking about. You know, that's that's the two things that are most present when it comes to these types of changes. So when it comes down to that. Uh, let's talk about another perspective. How about this? The second perspective that I wanted to go ahead and uh, talk about is the Raider Battler type of perspective. <clears throat> uh, the Raider, they usually do remote raids. Um, so there's not much changing in that. That still is uh, keeping the same. But yeah, now you won't be able to actually reach the gym. That you can just go ahead and use your free raid pass. Or one of the premium pass you've been saving up forever. To be able to, you know, do a raid from your friends or anything like that. Or in your neighborhood or something like that. Is it really that bad? Like, even in the bonus uh, section right here, it says right here, up to two free raid passes per day by spinning, uh, spinning gyms on photo discs uh, in your Pokestops. 
So if you go out and actually get those gems, wouldn't that actually benefit you the most? Because even if you're a free-to-play player, you'll be able to do more raids from now on every single day. You know, it's, it's kind of a thing. Now, again, that is different when it comes to like the distance, when it comes to it. It's more like being safer in that type of situation. <clears throat> so I don't know. I just, I, I just feel like uh, in that regard... It, just because you can rate, you know, five extra steps from where the gym is, I mean, that doesn't change much. And if you can't reach that gym because it's a private property or a gated community or anything like that, then you shouldn't even be in there anymore anyways. Or just use the remote rate pass anyways. So what's the difference? You know? that I just don't understand when it comes down to that. Oh. So, any, any thoughts about that, Chris? I, I, I just... Uh... I think it's something we we talked about before last time they talked about reverting it yeah if if you don't uh think you could walk normally up to it i don't think that you should uh be complaining because you can't spin it from 50 feet away <laughs> there you go I, I i don't think it's i don't i don't think it's uh something that should be a pokestop or a poke gym there's a reason uh we have the ability to report gyms as unsafe I don't think a lot of people do because yeah. they like the items. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I I don't think we should complain because we can't spin unsafe stops and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it's, it's it's crazy. Yeah. So that's one perspective when it comes down to it. And now the final perspective that I want to actually talk about is as a content creator kind of perspective. Now. We do a podcast for this game every single week of the of the year because we love the game. Except last week. Except last week. Uh, <clears throat> but um, it, a lot of the content creators out there, and I'm not going to mention any names because I don't want to actually bat, uh, bash on their names and everything. They've been wonderful people, no matter what. Uh, everybody, every single content creator, they're disheartened about this kind of thing. It's kind of changed. So it's not that it's the worst thing in the world, but some of them are taking it out of proportion that I really feel like they need to rethink of what they're doing uh, when it comes to the kind of thing. Now, to say the least... You know, a lot of the content creators out there, they're way, they have a way bigger follower than us. So they have more influence than us than you will ever see. However, most of them can also just go ahead and switch over to something and their follow base, uh, their follow base will just follow them. So even if they say, oh, I'm going to go ahead and just not play Pokemon Go anymore. Then, yeah, they can do that. They can go ahead and do that and do whatever they want to. And at the end of the day, people will still follow them because that's how they created the community. Cool. When it comes to something like us, you know, smaller community, smaller uh, audience and all those things, not a lot of influence when it comes down to things like that. We can't really do that because that will change. That will completely destroy the community that we have created. We don't have that big of a community, but we just don't have the means to say that, hey, let's go ahead and move on to Wizards Unite or something else <laughs> that, you know, Niantic doesn't do, <clears throat> you know? We can't really say and be like, okay, yeah, we're just going to go ahead and be like, I'm out. Yeah, I don't play this game anymore. I think a lot of them think that their opinion is something that Niantic looks at and just makes a change on a whim uh, as soon as they don't agree with them. Yeah. Uh, you know, but I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I, the it's honestly crazy how many people are going ham on this opinion. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So it it comes to it comes to show how somebody can say something and be like, okay, I am going to just go ahead and finish up with this game forever and you know play something else. And you know if you want to do that, that that is your choice, brother or sister or whatever. That is whatever you want to do. Nobody's stopping you. Nobody's changing your mind. Nobody's doing whatever else to say. Hey, you know, stay with us, please. You're such a great player. You know, kind of thing. We're not we're not gonna baby anybody. This is just a game. If you wanna play it, don't play it. That's basically it. So <clears throat> that's one thing about it. Now I know that sound may sound a little bit mean. And it, to be honest, yes, we do see the other side of the coin where this is a bad change for everybody because you know it that didn't hurt anybody to do this. It, it didn't hurt, you know, the players to be able to reach them a little bit closer for the gyms or anything like that. 
And yeah, we're are we upset about it? Yeah, we're upset. We know that this was great bonus to have, no matter what it is. But I will always, always call it just a bonus. No matter what you say or do or whatever permanent change you want to change to the game, this was a bonus since day one. Since day one of everything that happened in this world. I'm not going to change my mindset about that because what a bonus is just a type of uh, improvement that will go away eventually. And this eventually, unfortunately, is now. So... It is what it is. Now, the, will we change our play style? Probably, because that means that I actually have to walk a little bit closer to every single one of the stops that I usually would actually, you know, go ahead and probably spin it from my car or something, you know? It's like, those kind of things, <clears throat> it just, it is what it is. Will I be back it, to... It is kind of... Hmm? It is kind of funny, too. Uh, we were talking about it before the podcast. Uh, people that have, like, you know, six stops on top of them. And they're like, oh, I can only spend two of the stops now. What the heck? <laughs> do, do you see oh, my, my screen, gosh. Chris? Do you see where I'm standing at? Do you see any stops literally in between me <laughs> and the other stop that I couldn't reach or anything like that? Dude, I would kill to have a Poke stop on top of my house. Me too! Like In, in the game, in the game. But, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> it, it, it's honestly uh, a luxury. It's lu- it's a luxury. It's not something that is supposed to be given to everyone. Yes, and that's true. And and that's what a lot of people that I've seen say, hey, I can't reach this. I can't do that anymore. Uh, this is the worst thing that could happen. Well, it is what it is. Now you actually got to open your door and get to the stuff what it's supposed to be, you know? <clears throat> but yeah, it, it, it just it, it makes it, it... I just feel like the community is, is not trying hard enough to see the bigger picture. Which is basically Niantic trying to once again take the initiative on changing something that we knew was going to go away eventually. And again, that eventually is now. They haven't literally taken out everything. And they're giving us extra bonuses for at least another 30 days. If you see the today view, you have more uh, new bonuses plus the remote raid damage that is still there. So, it's not that it's changing and i've seen people even with incest saying hey the spawns are still the same but it's more effective when you walk it mm-hmm. this kind of thing you know so I, I i just feel like it's not it's something that we shouldn't really cry about when there's way other things that they can do to fix the game you know there's so many glitches out there so many lags so many things that they could make the game a little bit better but we're focusing on the wrong thing so I don't know. At this point, I want to hear what you guys have to say. I'm open for any ideas or any conversations. I'm open on Twitter for anything like that. You can join our Discord. We can have a conversation. We can talk and see what exactly is really bothering you or not. I mean... Tell us we're wrong. Tell us we're wrong. Tell us that that (laughs) in the end of the day, this is, you know, a bad thing for everybody, no matter what. And I don't think I see it that way. I'm sorry to say that I don't see it that way, so... I may be in the minority when it comes down to this. I'm not going to lie. I didn't think you agreed with me. Um, I'm very happy. No, no. I'm, but, I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I do like having conversations. <clears throat> yeah, so it, it's just I don't like seeing the community this way. We've seen it already going bad before over this at the beginning of the announcement. Now that we're finally here, I don't know. I feel like we're, it's just a matter of time where everybody's just going to forget about it because they're going to go back to a different type of play than they used to, no? So <clears throat> that, I just feel like that's the case. But anyways, again, if you guys want to hear from us or really want to speak to us or DM us or anything and talk about all this, don't hesitate to talk to us. Uh, we're open for mm-hmm. any discussions. Uh, we're not going to shut down your ideas or anything like that. We just want to have a normal conversation with somebody that feels like they're being treated differently. So... Yeah, if you want to be anonymous, no problems. We will not say names. We will not reach out to anybody out there. Trust me, if I want to talk to Niantic, I would. But, you know, that's not my cup of tea, unfortunately. So. Oh, that's actually something I want to add on. Uh, a lot of people are saying not to, uh, you know, harass people at Niantic. Uh, that's happened before. Don't want to see it again. Please. 
So uh, yeah, so that that we're gonna close that lid. Hopefully, everything will be a little more better tomorrow or in the next few days. I know people are going to, you know, they're gonna take this to their grave when it comes down to it. But it is what it is. All right. So now that we got the bad news and discouraging out of the way, let's talk some PvP. How about that? Get good, get wrecked. Let's go, Chris. <clears throat> And a fun one, man. Yes. Uh, um, I haven't done any GBL at all, literally in like weeks at this point. Um, but I've been hearing news about what the Ultra Remix is, and I hear it's a disaster. <laughs> Dude, uh, I have n I've pretty much tried not to touch it, in all honesty. Um, I've only been in open Ultra League. Uh, I know a lot of people complain about extra larges. If you do not have one on your team, it's almost impossible, it feels like. Um, don't get me wrong. There are very smart people. I am not one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I, I've just been trying to chill and open Ultra League. It's a lot easier, I feel like. Uh, it's a lot less heavy on your Stardust. You don't need level 50 Pokemon. Um, That's true. That is So, true. yeah, it's... Uh, do what you do. Uh, if you want to run extra large Umbreon in both leagues, by all means. <laughs> Definitely. Now, uh, the only reason why we actually are saying that uh, remakes for Ultra is just a disaster is because the amount of extra large Pokemon you need for this meta is incredibly high. Especially for the meta itself. Uh, I'm actually showing this right here for you guys. The very first Pokemon that you really need if you really want to have a good meta is like Extra Large Candy, Galarian, Stunfisk. Unless you went ham on GoFest, you basically don't have the candy for that. Defense Even Deoxys. If you went ham. I know, right? Then we have Defense Deoxys, Extra Large. I'm like, really? <laughs> and again, you will have to go ham for this type of Pokemon. Jellicent, Extra Large. How many people have an Extra Large Jellicent that we know of, Chris? People I know? No. Yeah. I, I don't think I know anybody with extra large. Even a bigger thing. Extra large Steelix. When have we ever seen a wild Snor uh, Onyx since the season started? You know, that's a funny one, too. Because um, everyone who was building uh, perfect Steelix uh, for Ultra League before. Because it was ranked uh, pretty high. But it just got trashed on uh, by a lot of things. Um, so it's kind of funny to see it up there again. I have i don't think I've seen it, though. I haven't, I haven't been doing Remix either. I haven't either, and I do have a perfect series, but I don't have the extra large candies for it. I barely even have eight extra large candies. Like, I, I, I wish I could, but it's not something in that regard, you know? So then we have Regirock, extra large Crafty, extra large Obama Snow. Uh, Geratina Origin, Needle Queen, Extra Large, Mandabox, Extra Large. Like, <clears throat> you can see the problem here, right, Chris? <laughs> it's yeah, just an yeah. Extra Large Galore game in that regards. Um, so, we don't recommend it. Uh, if you really want to just save Stardust, uh, just wait until we actually have an event for most of those Pokemons. But uh, I'm pretty sure that Niantic will see that... Uh, this type of meta is not the greatest when it comes down to the player base. Mm -hmm. So, uh, we'll keep it at that. Uh, it's going to be gone pretty soon anyway. So, keep an uh, look out when it comes down to it. And, yeah, just like uh, Ghost is saying, you know, not, not even half of the Pokemon Go players are level 40. So, they can't even get extra large candies. You know, thanks for that reminder there, uh, Ghost. If you really want to do GPL, just open Premiere uh, or open uh, Ultra League for now. Just wait until Master League comes back. Maybe that's when we'll see something else. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, and then, that's that's GPL. We'll leave it at that. Uh, Chris, what do you have to say about Continentals? Um, I didn't get to look too much at it. Uh, huge congrats <coughs> to the people that have uh, succeeded in it. Um, I... I am really happy uh with the way they did the meta the fact that you're having uh people use pokemon they have not really got uh any practice with i would say is uh really cool um i think that is a fantastic idea for testing the abilities of you know the strongest players in the world 
Yeah. Um, but I am a little bit sad. We had a local player, uh, Bladaku. Uh, he actually got uh, the uh, ability to go to Continentals, but I don't know exactly what happened. I don't know if he just got the email late, but he saw them doing prelims, and he's like, yo, what happened? <laughs> Why am I not in prelims? <laughs> Uh, so, very sad. Um, I knew he would have excelled in that. He loves running Spice. So, it's very sad to see. It is, it is. It definitely is something that I would have loved to see a local player, aside from Speedy's Chief, because we already know he's a local player anyways, uh, to see the type of way that he plays. It would have been nice to see him if he actually gets to like the top of the rankings anyways. So, mm -hmm. so Yeah. Yeah, so Continentals, of course, is going on, and some of them are being finished at this point. So uh, it is what it is. Congratulations to all the winners on the Continentals once again. And we'll see how it goes. So from then on, anything else we got to add, Chris? Anything else that we should know about? Not that I can think of, honestly. All right, so I guess that is it for the podcast. We went a little bit wrong, but again, we have been gone for almost two weeks, so that's good to know. Um, thank you so much for listening, everybody, once again, to the Pure Podcast. We actually had one of our biggest viewers she's right here on Twitch, so thank you so much for uh, joining us. Ten viewers. Gotta love y'all. Um, but yes, all of this podcast, will, uh, all of the episodes will always be in podcast services feeds. If you think, if you want to listen to us again or want to continue listening throughout this, go ahead and go to any other podcast feeds, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Our Heart Radio, Stitcher, and many more. If you can leave us a review, it will greatly appreciate it. It will spread out the love of this podcast anyways. Uh, follow our social media, myself and Pokemon, uh, or I'm sorry, I'm, I was about to say at Pokemon Go, but no. <laughs> uh, my social, of course, is at Pure Ladder Go, and Chris is at Pokemon Trigger Please, that's P-K-M-N, Trigger Please. Uh, you can always email us at the Purify Podcast at gmail.com. I really do have to change that on the overlay. That is not the right uh, presentation of Purify. That's a, that's a, uh, that's an R that I should take out anyways. Uh, <laughs> You're purring. I know, right? <laughs> well, I am Hispanic, so that makes a little more sense. Um, again, you can email us anytime. And don't forget to check us out at thepurifypodcast.com, the professor network. With that being said, I think, Chris, it's time to take us away for the night. All right, all right. Uh, thank you guys very much for coming by uh, while we, you know, had fun talking about the rewards we got, the rewards we're getting. Let us know what you guys get. Um, I'd say coming up, I'm most excited for Heracross. So do not flex a Shundo Heracross. I will find you. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I hope you guys have a fantastic time. We'll see you next week. Have a good one. Keep purifying them, and we'll see you guys next week. Week.